recently had this idea that I would uh, install this uh, universal XT BIOS this thing on uh, on my Ethernet Etherlink 3 ISA network adapter here on this uh, uh, 64k ROM chip so that I could boot using this this uh, compact flash to ID adapter from my uh, sound card in this case this is uh, sound plaster O64 unfortunately plug and play ISA card plug and play unfortunately because uh, this means that this ID port is not initialized when the machine boots so this uh, XTID BIOS cannot actually access it at least not out of the box so I started looking into how could I fix this situation and the first thing I ran, ran into was in DOS you can use this Unisound software that some guy in Bogon's uh, forum made you can use it to initialize these plug and play cards now mainly this is just meant, meant to replace the creative drivers so that you can easily initialize the card when you boot and play games and sounds work but you can also initialize the ID port uh -huh. unfortunately of course you cannot run this software upon boot from ROM but this kind of got me started and then I started uh, studying uh, there, there was some discussion on this forum about someone wishing this maker of the Unisound guy contribute to this Reactos open source operating system which kind of it's a remake of Windows at least, I guess in some ways. But uh, I started looking at their code because there seemed to be uh, this ISA plug and play code there and I went through a bunch of these these codes and figured it's maybe not too difficult to implement at least some sort of static, uh, static uh, modification, let's say, to the source code of the XTID so that it could first before it actually runs the XTID I was thinking it could run a small piece of code which would in initialize my sound cluster card and then it could boot normally using its own code from from that ID port and in the end I basically figured out that you need to write a bunch of stuff to these two ports 279 hex and A79 hex but it took a little bit of iteration to figure out what you actually needed to do and while trying to figure out this I was using this uh, PMP dump software that I found somewhere and I used that to, uh, to dump uh, dump registers and, uh, and this uh, config options from my sound blaster and uh, you can see a bunch of configurations here these are the normal IO ports that you would configure in DOS but I, this is uh, not uh, relevant for the booting so I was basically looking for or this so there's ID here so this is a logical device 3 at least in my configuration and this was a, a card number 1 because I actually in my I used this in my 386 machine it only had all the other cards are actually non plug and play so this is pretty much the only one and then I figured I would use this port number 170 to for, for booting 
but uh, this of course you still needed to figure out a bunch of stuff what to actually write to those ports and you're checking at the registry dumps one may be able to figure out a little bit more so here's the logical device 3 which matter in this case you need to activate it so you need to write something into register 30 and then uh, IO descriptor 0 and one. well I don't know if you actually need one but at least 0 you need to configure them so that you have these set ports there and these ports you would then uh, use to, uh, in this uh, XTID configuration software you could put them into this uh, okay that's just not configured but you select here the 16-bit option and then configure here what you put there like this and then you drive it back and you would have a system which is looking for this uh, um, ID at least from the correct ports I'm not gonna say it now because uh, well no point anyway the problem was that somehow I needed to figure out the code and inject the code to this uh, XTID BIOS so that it would actually initialize the device before booting. And the way I... well, it was more or less a uh, trial and error, but... Uh, okay, maybe we first look at the... Um, the BIOS code. So typically these uh, ROM extensions uh, they have this 55AA indicator as, as two first two bytes but then at address 3 there is a jump to code. So I figured that if I replace this jump with a jump to my code and then after my code had executed jump back to where this jump wanted to go I would have managed to run my initialization code now of course in order to do this there needs to be some space in this ROM file where I can check my code and in this case it turns out the easy way to find some uh, empty space is to just scroll through the code and see that there is this 00, zero region here at uh, 19F0 hex where I figured I would uh, inject my code now there's a little bit of a complication that usually these uh, ROM biases also has this final byte here which is a checksum byte so if I modify this it's not gonna run but luckily in this case this configuration utility rewrites the checksum because it also edits some of the configuration in there so it needs to re recalculate the checksum and update it but in any case my code. Uh, I make this uh, assembler code which basically uh, uh, the, the way I figured what I need to write into these ports is basically this reactors code. But uh, the starting point is that I just take this uh, first few bytes from this original ROM then I jump to my code which is in the empty region or let's say going to be in the empty region uh, then I dump the original code from the XD, ID XD ROM and the, then in the empty section we basically act according to this, um, this uh, ISA PNP specification more or less okay maybe I'm not doing exactly as the specification suggests now, this is also static code that uh, fits my case, but it seemed to work. There is this uh, send key which seems like a random uh, hex character, uh, a random hex data. It's part of the specification. You need to send this to the card so that the PNP components understand that they are being talked to. And then this code more or less just wakes up up the card chips and then 
select the suitable uh, this logical device tree which we just saw from the PNP dump and then uh, we write these registers that we looked at first we basically activate it as you could see in the PNP dump and here we program this port 170 hex and then this uh, another was it configuration or status port and then after that we jump back to where the original code was supposed to continue and then we just make sure that the rest of the file is basically the file length is uh, correct now this compiles fairly nicely like this and if we look at the code at address 3 we can see that now it points to our code and if we go there we can see this is where our code is and there we jump back to the whatever the original code was there now of course if we look at the this here this is now incorrect you see it's 3e now if we now do this uh, configuration here load the binary that it just configured we put here our stuff go back and then save it back to the original file exit to this and then check we can see that it has updated the checksum from 3 to 41 or 41 hex and now if you program this into your ROM chip here insert everything to the machine and start it you can see that it actually finds the CF card you can see that the, the XTID Universal BIOS is accessing 170 and here this uh, Unisound also shows the all card having the exactly the same address and everything works fine now of course part of the process is that you need to configure the uh, Ethernet adapter boot ROM but the, in this case this 3.com uh, Ethernet 3 it comes with a nice configuration utility where you can set your IO addresses interrupts and boot ROM and in my case I seem to pick this address more or less randomly and it seemed to work maybe C8000 would be better because that's immediately after the VGA BIOS at C0032K but nothing strange there anyway works nicely I guess it would be nice actually if instead of this sort of static hack one, one would uh, implement this, this um, ISA PNB configuration what Unisound does as part of the XTID but actually maybe, maybe the maker of Unisound would be the best guy to, guy to do that. Anyway, that's all.